So let's take a look at how you can use PowerShell to check and see if a file already exists. So the first, first method we're going to look at is using test path. So here on line three, I'm using test path to see if the important underscore file.txt already exists. And you can see down below, since it returned false, that that file does not exist. And the way that test path knows to check for a file is because you can see the path type parameter I'm passing leaf. So a leaf is a file. And in the case of line five, I'm checking to see if a folder exists. I'm specifically telling it to look for a path type of container. And why is it container and leaves? I don't know. My daughter likes putting leaves in containers though. Now, so you can see that I, I neither have an important file or an important folder. And that's okay. Uh, let's look at an example where we actually include this in a script. So line 10, I'm passing the same path as before. And here, line 13, this is where I'm returning true or false inside of an if statement. So if not, so if test path returns false, in which the not will make it true, so if, if this file does not exist, then I'm gonna try to create a new file and get some output that the file has been created on line 16. And if that fails for some reason, since it's in a try block, it will throw on line 18 because it'll drop into the catch block. And if the file does exist, it'll write, it'll give me this output here on line 23. So we run this script. You can see down below that we got the output. The file has been created. And so now what's really cool with the way that this script is designed is if we run it again, you notice we didn't get an error. All we got is some output saying that the file already exists. That's what's brilliant about testing if a file exists before you try to do something to it you don't get any errors. Okay, so, and another method using get item and get child item. Let's say we have that same file, uh, but I've already deleted it, so it, do it doesn't exist. And line 34, if we use get item, we give it that path, it gives us an error, it says that file doesn't exist. And if we use get child item, again, it says that does not exist. So if we use these in a script, when the file doesn't exist, it's going to error unless we use error action. So here on line 43, I'm using get item for that path and using the error action parameter to tell it to ignore any errors. So that means that it will fail if it doesn't exist, uh, but it won't throw an error. So here, let's let's just run this separately so you, so you understand what I'm, I'm saying here. So there, nothing, we got nothing. So if the file did, did exist, it would return something. So let's run this script. This script is structured the same as before. So if the file doesn't exist, then we're going to create it on line 45, and we're going to catch any errors. And then if it does exist, we're going to get this message on line 53. So let's run this. And you can see down below, we got the message, the file has been created. And now that the file exists, if I run this same get item, even with the error action ignore, it returns the file because the file does exist. There are no errors to ignore. And so we can run that same script without changing anything and there, we don't get an error because the file exists. We simply get this message that we chose to put in the else statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that file. And then we'll scroll on down to the next example. So this is using .NET, so the system.io.file and the exists method. I'm passing it a file path. So here on line 60, same path as before. And since I've deleted the file, it's not going to exist. And we get a false here. So it's, it's the same output as test path. It's just using .NET instead. So the script is gonna look suspiciously familiar. However, in this case, what we're going to do is we're gonna try to write something to a file. So what happens when you try to write something to a file and the file doesn't exist? Well, it, it errors. And so that's where we wanna say that if the file exists on line 68, we're gonna try to write something to it. And if it doesn't exist, we're gonna get uh, down below this file could not be updated because it does not exist. If the file doesn't exist like it doesn't currently, we get this error message down below saying it does not exist. So it didn't try to write something to a file that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna scroll up here, we're gonna create that file and now run uh, this script again. However, this time you can see that this file has been updated with, and it wrote just a random GUID to it. So the last thing I wanna cover here is that we don't always have to either ignore a file if it exists or do something only if it doesn't exist, we can rename it if we wanted to. So for example, we're gonna use that same file and it already exists because I've left it from the last example. 
and line 93, what we're going to do is we're going to plan on moving it to this archive folder. So in ctemp, I'm going to create an archive folder with this format. You can see that get date. And so line 96. So if the item exists, so line 96, that will only return true if the item exists. Remember that from the second example. And then we're also on line 99, we're using a test path. So if the archive folder doesn't already exist, 100, we're gonna create it. And then 103, we're gonna move the existing file into that archive folder. We'll get the message that it's been moved. And if there are any errors, it'll, it'll catch them here on line 105 to 107. And then down below, now that we know there's no file there, we're now going to create a file. So you can see new item at the same path and we'll get this message saying that something's been created. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, see, I forgot to instantiate the archive folder variable. So let's try that again by creating the archive folder variable first. And then we'll go and run the script. So now down below, you can see that the old file was archived to the archive folder and the new file was created, even though it's the same path as before. So that's how in PowerShell you can check if a file exists and some examples on how to work with those. Thanks for watching.